What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Tesla and I'm gonna be breaking down my back of the napkin math for what I think the company is gonna be doing in 2023 in terms of revenue, cars delivered, and profitability. I got an awesome email from a HyperChanger who had a couple questions you know, from my last episode about why I'm so heavily invested and my personal portfolio is so highly concentrated into Tesla. And I thought these were great questions that would be worthy of making an episode about. So huge shout out to Johnny Busman or Yanni Busman Let's get right into it and break down these questions. Tesla's equity is now valued at $50 billion. You mentioned that you think it can go up 5 to 10x in the coming couple years, which would equal 250 to 500 billion in market cap, assuming no dilution. How many vehicles would you estimate that Tesla would have to produce and at what average price and profit margin per vehicle to be worth 200 to 250 to 500 billion? Great question. I mean, this is the question. I don't if, I think if you don't have a, you know, mental model to get Tesla to several hundred billion in market capitalization, then I don't understand why you'd be investing in the company. So of course I have a rationale for this. So I whipped up a little spreadsheet called Tesla 2023 back of the napkin math to show you guys. And these are total guesstimates of what I am assuming Tesla will be doing in 2023. And I'm going to put this, the link to this Google doc in the description. So you guys can download it, edit it, play with it yourselves. Year 2023, I am assuming automotive revenue of $138 billion on deliveries of 2.1 million cars. Now we're going to get more into this later. So hold on. Energy revenue of about 12.7 billion. That gives me to total revenue about $151 billion for Tesla. Um, I'm assuming a blended gross margin of 25%. That leads me to a total gross profit of $38 billion. SGNA of 12 billion, R&D of 7 billion. Leads me to operating income of about 19 billion, which works out to about a 12% operating margin. And if we assume that Tesla has a $500 billion market capitalization, or that's what the company's trading for in 2023. That would equate to a 3.3 times price sales multiple and a 26.8 times price EBIT ratio. If we assume that there is 220 million shares outstanding, and there's this is a key assumption, there's only 166 million shares outstanding for Tesla today. So I'm assuming that Tesla issues another 34 million of employee-based stock options to bump the share count to 200 million. Then I'm assuming that Tesla sells 20 million shares in the next five years in equity issuances to raise capital to fund its business. So we're going to come back to this 20 million later, but that's important to remember. And that's how I got to 220 million shares outstanding in 2023. So if we divide 500 billion by 220 million, we get to an implied price per share of about $2,300 in 2023. That is huge upside from where we're trading today at $280. And so this is kind of the numbers that get me excited about why I'm invested in Tesla today. Now let's dive into this a little. Revenue and deliveries breakdown. I am assuming that in 2023, here is the breakdown of which cars Tesla is selling and for how much price. Model S and X selling 60,000 units a year. Average selling price, a little over 100 grand. That's gonna do about 12 billion in revenue. Model 3 and Model Y, I'm assuming sell about 700,000 units per year. This would add almost 39 billion in revenue each from those two programs. We're selling about 2,000 roadsters per year, 100,000 semi trucks per year, which is 18 billion in revenue, and about half a million of the pickup truck per year, um, which is equivalent to about 30 billion in revenue. And so adding these all up gets me to deliveries of 2.1 million cars and 2023 revenue of 138 billion from the automotive business. Now, before you guys say these assumptions are crazy, Tesla delivered 100,000 cars last year. How are they gonna get to 2.1 million by 2023? Well, uh, the biggest reason is Model 3 and Model Y. These are much more affordable vehicles and they're opening the addressable market up for Tesla significantly. Tesla has already gotten about four or 500,000 pre-orders for its Model 3 without anyone being able to test drive it. Elon Musk on certain conference calls has alluded that in the long term, he believes Model 3 demand will be somewhere around 700,000 units per year. Additionally, to back up that assumption, in the US, the small to mid-size luxury sedan markets where the Model 3 is directly competing sells about 800 to 850,000 cars per year. If they get about 30% market share, which is the same market share that the Model S has gotten in the luxury sedan space, that would mean the Model 3 is selling about 250,000 units per year in the US alone. That extrapolates to about 700,000 globally. So that's where I'm getting that number. And then with, for the Model Y for 700,000 units per year, um, you know, the crossover utility market is actually much bigger than the small and mid-sized sedan market. So this is assuming Tesla's market share is even worse in the crossover market, um, sort of in line with 
what Elon Musk has said. He's actually guided that he thinks they could be selling a million Model Ys per year eventually. In terms of the semi, which is another big assumption, Elon Musk has referenced that he believes Tesla could be selling about 100,000 semi trucks per year. Now remember in, uh, in the US, they're on average selling about 250,000 class eight semi trucks per year. That's just to put things in context for you guys. In terms of the pickup truck, Pickups are actually one of the best selling vehicles in the entire country. If you are like me and you're, I lived in Seattle, now I live in New York, I would never know that. I never see anybody driving pickups in the city, but they are huge. The addressable market for that is massive. And I believe if Tesla has a pickup truck with the best specs on the market, they're gonna have an incredibly successful product. And so that is how I got to the 500,000 number. Ford uh, with their F series, which is the best selling pickup truck, sells about you know eight or 900,000 cars per year of its F series. And that's just in the US and it's very hard to predict how well Tesla's will do. I mean, we haven't even seen this product. Who knows how fast the adoption uptake will be, but I'm assuming that Tesla, you know, like the Model S and like the Model X is able to capture significant market share, disrupt the market. So that's why I kind of estimated half million pickup truck sales per year. And then the average selling prices are pretty straightforward. That gets me to the automotive business of 2.1 million cars per year and 138 billion in revenue. Moving on to the energy business, Tesla did about 1.12 billion in energy revenue in 2017. I am assuming that they grow grow um, their energy business at a compounded rate of 50% per year until 2023 on average. That gets me to about 13 billion in revenue. Why did I assume 50% per year? Elon Musk has said that he expects the car business could grow 50% per year and has actually guided the energy business to grow faster than that. So I just put in the 50% number, um, which is already tremendous growth, but really um, this is going to be tough to estimate. We actually haven't even seen a full, you know, year over year comparison of Tesla's energy business because they just acquired Solar City. Just back the napkin math here and this is sort of your overall picture of how I got to the 150 billion in overall revenue number. Now moving to the operating uh, expense assumptions, here are the 2017 SG&A for Tesla. Here's what I put for their 2023 number. This implies a 30% compounded annual growth rate for R&D. goes from 1.4 billion to about 7 billion, an, an implied 31% annual growth rate. So pretty much here, I just tried to assume that Tesla will continue to grow their expenses rapidly, but at a slower clip than they're growing their revenue. And that is where the operating leverage comes into play. And that's why the business is able to start turning a profit as they become bigger and hit economies of scale. That sort of sums up my back of the napkin math. This is sort of of, you know, the guiding principle of why I think Tesla still has massive upside here. That's question number one. Moving on to the next question. How much production capacity would Tesla have to build to reach those production numbers? And how much would building that production capacity cost? So Tesla's guided their Fremont factory can produce about 700,000 cars per year when it's maxed out. So obviously they're gonna need to build another facility or significantly improve the efficiency of that factory in the long term. So now going back to this model, that key assumption I made where I said they're gonna sell 20 million shares via um, equity offerings for, for to raise capital, if we assume that they do these equity offerings, you know, as the stock keeps going up in these future years, at an average of let's say $500 per share, 20 million shares, raises the company about $10 billion, that'll be enough additional capital to fund another factory and to ramp production to 2 million cars per year. But once again, this is kind of guesswork, but I am assuming, you know, significant dilution and eight to 10 billion raised for Tesla. Additionally, I think it's gonna be important to note that like Elon Musk has tweeted, the company looks like it'll be able to produce positive operating cash flow starting in late 2018, this means they'll be less reliant on dilution and debt and can fund these expansion of factories with their internal cash flow for Model 3. So, you know, this 8 to 10 billion of dilution, I'm assuming, could be a drastic overestimate if they actually do indeed go cash flow positive this year. Next question. How would you estimate annual global auto sales to be in 10 years? And what would you estimate as Tesla's market share? So global light vehicle sales around 90 million units per year. That's not including trucks, which Tesla is also selling. So if we assume that that stays flat and Tesla's doing about 2.1 million in sales. That means on a global basis, they're only capturing about two to 3% of the entire global auto market. So I think, you know, this is a pretty reasonable assumption. I'm not assuming they dominate. I'm assuming they stay, you know, kind of a luxury niche player. The auto market is so big that even two, two to 3% market share would be enough to justify Tesla as a massive company, especially given their profit margins per vehicle are so high. It's also important to note, I could see vehicle sales decreasing, you know, kind of substantially by 2023, depending on how fast these autonomous vehicle programs Programs ramp. Um, if you think about it, you know, if Uber and Lyft continue to get cheaper and more efficient and more ubiquitous, there's going to be less pressure or need for people to buy cars. This means that there's going to be a massive boom in demand for these ride sharing services, but you know, consumer auto sales will decrease. But in the long run, if Tesla leads 
in autonomy, then they're gonna get a big portion of these sales from companies like Uber and Lyft who wanna operate their own taxis. And you know, Tesla's cars being electric, I think are very well suited for these ride sharing platforms because they are maximizing the savings per mile driven because you're not refilling up with gas, you're refilling up with electricity, which in many cases is a lot cheaper. So, you know, even if auto the auto market shrinks drastically, I think their trends in Tesla's favor, well, they will be the car of choice for this robot taxi future. Last question, this is a great one. If there's a deep recession during the next one to three years, how would you estimate Tesla to navigate such economic environment? Tesla right now is in a very precarious situation. They have a ton of debt, um, in fact, some that is coming due in the next year. You know, they're ramping Model 3, they have all of these orders. It's sort of a make or break moment for the company. If a recession hits right now, you know, everybody cancels their Model 3 orders, Model S and X orders just completely dry up because everybody's broke because we have an 08 scenario or worse. Tesla as a company is gonna hit, get hit incredibly hard. The revenue is gonna get hit. The share price is gonna go down dramatically. But I think people over exaggerate how much they're gonna need to raise money. Because if you look at Tesla's you know, income statement and cash flow and financials, the bulk of where they're spending money is on capital investments to build out production capacity for future growth. If there's a recession and nobody's ordering more Teslas, they don't have to build out capacity for future growth. So their cash needs shrink dramatically. So I think Tesla's actually in a pretty good position. That being said, would that hurt the share price? Could that mean an increased dilution? Of course. And in an ultra worst case scenario, if they can't raise a billion or two that they would need to get through a rough stretch, then they could totally go bankrupt. Very important to understand, Tesla, as I've said on this channel many times, is burning capital, not profitable, in startup mode. And if a recession hits while they're still, you know, while those three things still hold true, then the company is going to have a very difficult time. You know, I don't know. So it, it could go bankrupt. But I will add to the caveat of this is once again, if Tesla can go cash flow positive in Q4 or Q3 2018, this entire risk profile changes. And you know, I believe they're in great possession uh, to navigate the next recession. Also, I'd like to point out, this to me is hilarious. Everybody likes to talk about how Ford and GM are so profitable. There's so much safer companies. Tesla's gonna get screwed the next recession. You know who's gonna get screwed the next recession is Ford and GM because they have over a hundred billion dollars in liabilities on their balance sheet of auto loans for leases that they give out, which are collateralized by the vehicles with the internal combustion engine. So Ford is basically a massive house of cards, almost more of a bank doing auto loans than it is actually a car company. And I believe that banking side of the business is in massive risk. Ford and GM are the most likely to go bankrupt in the next recession because you have this combination of they're not even a car company, they're a bank, all of their customers are gonna start defaulting and then they're gonna get collateral, which is collapsing in value. So I think the value of the assets on their books of these vehicles are massively overinflated because I think the, the demand for used internal combustion engine cars is gonna just fall off a cliff as electric vehicles take off. Just a side note, but I think you know Ford and GM are in drastically more precarious position than Tesla is in the next recession. Anyway, this wraps up this episode. Huge shout out to John or Yanni for sending me this. Love to get your guys' questions directly. Sometimes it's hard for me to make Tesla or just any kind of content because there's just so much to cover and I don't know what you guys wanna know. So I ideas for episodes, as always, shoot me an email, galileorussell at gmail.com. Would love to know what you guys think. If you like HyperChange and you want to support, please check out our Patreon page. We have an exclusive weekly newsletter, which is awesome, giving away free merch as well. So please check that out if you want to support. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.